Hello and welcome back to Insights with Experts on the Academy of Metal Roof Innovations. Last time, Dustin told us about the concept of wind uplift on standing seam metal roofs and how installing wind clamps can be a simple yet effective solution to this problem. On this episode, Dustin and Mark will be sitting down with our panel of experts from the wind world to get you insider info you won't find anywhere else. Mark, take it away. Thanks, Patrick. Um, so uh, we have a really great group of people, um, folks, experts in this area from different perspectives who are very happy to talk more about um, this topic. So why don't we let them introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Dick Davis. I'm a licensed professional engineer in structural engineering and also a licensed professional engineer in fire protection engineering. Been with FM Global for 46 years. I'm uh, serving as a uh, staff vice president in the chief engineers group and uh, our specialty in our group, Mike's and I group is uh, in uh, natural hazards and structures. Thanks, Dick. So why don't we, uh, I guess we'll go to your colleague, Mike. Uh, my name is Mike Matua. I'm a staff engineering specialist with FM Global. I work closely with Dick Davis and the chief engineers group specializing in the natural hazards and structures. Um, I lead the company's loss prevention engineering strategy for windstorm, hail, and other natural hazards. Uh, this includes leveraging the knowledge from research, uh, subject, subject matter experts such as Dick Davis, as well as all the property loss prevention engineers all around the world to help our clients better understand their risks and also prevent them from um, any damage due to natural hazards. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, uh, Ken Buckinger? Hi, I'm Ken Buckinger. I work for NBCI. I've been there for a little over 32 years. Uh, before that, uh, for 13 years, I was an independent metal building erector. When I went to work for NBCI, I was uh, heavily involved in the design and development of uh, almost all of our standing seam roofs that we uh, sell now. Did quite a bit of uh, roof inspections over the years, either for weather tightness warranties or problems with the metal roof or roof blow offs. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Uh, we're also happy to have on this um, panel, uh, Bob Zabzik. Hi, Mark. Thanks. Uh, my name is Bob Zabzik. And uh, yeah, much like Dick, I'm an engineer. Uh, not quite as experienced as Dick, but I've been around the industry for a while. I got into it in uh, 1995, uh, went to work for uh, NCI Building Systems. And uh, it's a company that about 1996 uh, merged with NBCI. And I got to know Kenny very well and work with him many, many years and uh, very, very heavily involved in the testing uh, uh, certification of NBCI standing seam roofs, as well as uh, other companies that uh, NCI owned. So uh, happy to be here today. Thanks for having me. Great, uh, awesome. Thanks, Bob. Um, and then with me as you know, with a lot of uh, these webinars is um, our own Dustin Haddock. Um, Dustin, can you say a brief word? Thanks, Mark. I'm looking forward to this topic. Uh, we've kind of got the who's who in the wind world, and so it should be a fun topic to go over. I'm looking forward to it, too. <laughs> so I think I want to start things off by um, getting back to the basics. Um, so what are the pros and cons between uh, what we tend to call an exposed fastened roof, because the fasteners are you can see the fasteners on the roof versus the standing seam roof, I guess. I don't know who wants to jump in, but what's the pros? What are the major advantages of a standing seam roof, I guess, and disadvantages? Well, with an R panel roof, I mean, it's it's probably much less costly than a standing seam roof. And again, that's what our industry started out with. I mean, that's what we knew. The, the key thing about an R panel roof is, is it's easy for the guys to miss the purlin when they're putting the screws in. And so now you got a hole, you know, that you've got to caulk or try to put a, you know, back then they didn't really even have oversized screws. And so you wound up with holes in your roof that, yeah, you caulk it, but over time the caulk dries out and now you got roof leaks. The first loss investigation I ever did with the company was back I think around 75 and it was a through fastened roof and it was leaking every 25 feet and be, they used the roughly 25 foot sheets and that's where they made their laps and they didn't seal it properly and ironically it wasn't the rain it, it had snow on the roof and then it rained 
and then the snow dammed it up and the rain just kind of backed up under the joints and it leaked but um certainly the the concealed clip standing seam roofs are uh, much preferred for the larger buildings where you're going to have uh, thermal expansion, a lot of thermal expansion, and they're also uh, less likely to leak. I've seen a lot of through fastened roofs over the years and over time, especially sometimes the holes elongate around the fasteners and you get rusting. So you're more likely to get leakage with a uh, through fastened roof, especially if it's a pretty, pretty wide structure. Stop and think about an engineer that works at a metal building company, say back in the 60s and 70s. He's been designing metal buildings with our panel. They're UL 90 rated. The same thing goes for an architect. You know, he's specifying something UL 90 rated. Our panels are through fastened. They don't fail the wind up lift. And now the industry starts moving to standing seam. They're UL 90 rated too. So without having the experience of having a bunch of roofs blow off from that engineer or that architect's mind, they're doing the same thing they've been doing all these years. They specified a UL90 roof back in the day. It was through fastened, never had any problems with wind up lift. They shifted to this other product. It's UL90 rated, so they're in their mind, they've done a good job. But again, that's that learning experience that our industry had to go through when these winds started blowing off, primarily off of these military installations all over the United States. I think it's worth going back and explaining, you know, metal roofs and specifically what a standing seam roof is. So I think I'd like to have uh, our own Dustin Haddock to lead this part of the discussion, Dustin. It's interesting that I'm explaining this because I'm sitting in a room with some of the heavy hitters of the industry as it relates to standing seam metal roofs. Uh, but S5, we've been making components that marry to uh, standing seam roofs uh, since the early 90s. Two of the most common is where we're going to spend our time is a mechanical fold and the snap together seam. The standing seam you're looking at right now is a snap together panel, uh, which means you have a male leg and a female leg that intertwine together with a clip in the middle. Uh, which holds that entire assembly down, whether it's fixed to a, a solid deck or a structural purlin. With a mechanical fold, it's kind of the same idea. You've got a male um, leg with a female leg and a, a clip intertwined in between. Um, but when it's mechanically fold, there's a, a piece of equipment, uh, essentially like a, a roll former that rolls over the top of that roof and folds it together, most commonly 90 or 180 degrees. So in general, how long, you know, within the history of metal roofs, has a standing seam metal roof, that specific type, has that been around as long as metal roofs have been around? Or is that something that's fairly modern? Armco came out with steel locks back in the 30s, but it wasn't mm -hmm. used as a standing seam for a lot, you know, a lot later than that, obviously. They actually had it in a metal house in the World's Fair back in the 30s. Really prior to, I think, really the probably mid to late 90s is when standing seam kind of started becoming more and more popular. One big driver to using standing seam roofs, especially in the last you know, 10 years or so, has been energy codes, which is what what is uh, pushing a lot of the smaller buildings to standing seam roofs because most of the insulation systems that are out there that are de designed to achieve the uh, the U factors that are required by ACC and ASHRAE ninety point one require a standing seam roof or at least they require the offset uh, between the roof and the uh, the purlins for the one layer of the insulation to pass uh, and that's uh, you can do those do that with the, with the through fastened roof as well but the, it's the difference between having an inch or two of the, uh, of the insulation cavity versus having it smashed down completely on top of the purlin. And so that difference in, in the R factor is, is uh, the difference between complying and not complying with energy codes. A lot of it also has to do with it, whether the building is uh, conditioned or not. Well, that's going to do it for us this time on Insights with Experts, but don't worry, there's still lots more to be covered. Next time, the panel will delve into the way standing seam metal roofs are subjected to wind damage or blow-offs and how wind clamps can protect against that excessive wind stress. Be sure you hit subscribe to find out as soon as new episodes are released. Thanks for watching, we hope to see you next time.